Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. What on earth are we going to show you today? Well, Hitler had thousands of crews working on the German submarines and those crew members, they had to stay somewhere. And different places in Europe can actually show you that even today. So join us and let's go out and find the path together right now. This former German World War II U-boat camp is absolutely stunning and there are some features here that we want you to see because this is very rare and it's absolutely unheard of to see what is still here. So what greets you in the beginning here is the entrance port which is actually the original one and that is a machine gun bunker ready to be able to take you out if you were not the right guy coming in and next here where Eagle Eye is that is the original entrance point of the camp itself and in here it just starts off with some barracks it's going to be a massive very interesting bunker and believe me or not there's going to be a flak gun turret right here a flak tower that is so weird that we just had to come here and share that with you so join us and let's find out what is here on this German U-boat camp. As I said, the U-boat camp here is absolutely stunning. The architecture and the proportions and everything is just absolutely spot on. And all of these buildings that you see are the original German Kriegsmarine barracks and they are in very, very good condition. And just imagine you know, let me show you one picture here. That is the crews that stayed here, both officers and typical regular sailors. And they were all on the submarines. So the sub crews were taken very good care of, no matter where it was in, in Europe. And this is no exception. And you can see that the barrack compound here is absolutely spectacular even today. And they are very much the same. All of the structures are kind of built in the same way. But there are some different features here that separates some of them because some of them have something in the background and some of them have something very special as their, their kind of neighbor. So we're going to show you that. But now I'm going to go up this way here and we're going to show you one of the very special features that are or is on this campsite. Having served on a submarine myself as a sonar operator, kind of it is just, this is really cool to be honest it kind of puts me back in time to the days when I do remember we were longing to get back to shore and just be you know a little bit crazy for a while and I can see these guys here you know coming in from a three three four weeks already out there maybe they had a lot of battle action going on and then suddenly you are here at this camp and you have available tons of features and this camp had a ton of features believe it or not they had a sauna they had a casino for the officers they even had a massive uh, swimming pool let me show you a picture of that that is spectacular huh but there's something really special up there that we're going to have a look at. So me and Eagle Eye is going to take you up there and you're going to be even more amazed. That thing there is a spectacular piece of build. As you can see, it's kind of built as a larger house compound but it's actually a massive controlled bunker. Inside there, these walls were about two meters thick. And you can see there's a guard tower on the top. I'll get you up there. You can see that right there. This was kind of disguised as a larger, um, in a way, a um, production building or a, you know, a building to produce things in. 
but it's actually a massive bunker and it was called Bunker 18 or Bunker 18 and it was the uh, control center for the whole area of a U-boat pen that was kind of that way and it's still here and it's absolutely impressive to see uh, how the community has kind of concealed it and kept it like this and also it's being used as uh, something really cool is being used as a recreational kind of area for the youth here and that is absolutely cool to see. Just want to show you something here. This is the thickness of the wall. As I said, it just looks like a tiny little house, but see, it's from here to here. That's like one and a half, two meters. These are ventilation positions. This is a more modern door. Then you can see how thick these walls are. There's some kind of activity inside there, so we're not gonna go inside. But that basically tells you that this was not a production facility or factory. It was the main headquarter for the U-boat operations in the area. So the lower part of the camp further down here, that is basically for the lower ranking, uh, you know, enlisted and officers. And uh, one of the very special features that we're going to show you is further down there. We're also going to give you a little overview by flying over this place with the drone. So you can kind of get a feeling of how the layout is today. And most importantly, how was it before? So I'm going to do some overflights of a black and white kind of image. And I'm going to take you to see the rest of the camp by doing the drone trip over it all. But as you can see here, this is the lower part of the camp. As I said, lower enlisted ranked uh, officers. You have the Bunga Artsen here and the control center. And then up here in this area, that is where the lower ranking officers and higher ranking officers was. And that is because many of them actually had to go in there to do some reports and stuff so the officers were up here and the barracks are basically the same beautiful structures the beautiful buildings but you know it's a little bit more secluded because you know they're officers so they were kind of expected to be treated a bit different and uh, they also had their own underground shelters and even the barrack foundations on some of these are extremely thick walled and uh, they could also have been used as uh, shelters but uh, this look at that structure there it is beautiful this gigantic thing they put up here uh, this was the Appellplatz let me show you exactly where we are but it's completely restructured to be a kindergarten. So a daycare center. And you can see this was the Appellplatz around where the offices was. You have the Bunker Atzen or it in there. And then you have the rest of the camp further down. But let's continue around this little half circle where the officers were. And then we're gonna continue down. And I'm gonna show you something absolutely spectacular. Got this little photo here of something that happened here actually happened five times I read. Let me show you that photo right there. I'm not too sure, but I think that is the actual barrack that was where the fire broke out and there were four or five other fires during the time here. This camp was built in just a few months and almost 95% of the work being done here was done by local volunteer as a that meaning people that was hired by the Germans to actually build this and they were very often actually paid twice or three times as much wages as a regular wage would be in the area so please keep that in mind when you talk about construction being done in the Second World War uh, it's not always that is forced laborers or prisoners of war who built these things very very many times at locations there were local uh, hired people who did the jobs for the Germans so over there you can see bunker 18 bunker 18 and 
it doesn't look like too much, does it? But it's a heavy duty fortified construction. And that's the point. The Germans needed to protect that and kind of hide it away. And what could be better to hide it away in between what looked from the air as a typical village from the area. I want to show you this. This is one of the barracks. You see that? I'm not going to intrude in the privacy here, but I've seen it before. These walls are like 60 to 70 centimeters thick. And the roof on the first floor from the basement is like half a meter thick. So what they did, they integrated air raid shelters inside the barracks themselves. So many of these barracks, they didn't need any outside shelters because they integrated it right into the basement of the of the uh, barrack and in that way the crew could actually run down there and uh, they would be pretty safe. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you? In this manner and fashion here by creating beautiful World War II dioramas in this place, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with for your eyes only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff. And if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month. But now let's continue our little adventure. So here you can see one of the barracks here. And then suddenly this one appears. See that? I think that is one of the shelters that was originally here for the crews. Maybe some extra shelters to run into if you were on the outside. So it's very thick uh, in the in the roof area as well, and you can see it's placed just next to the barracks here, which is in a very very nice condition. And it's, this is about the only structure that you can see on the uh, level of the ground. The rest are actually buried, but there are several of these around. But this is basically the only one which is still available next to the barracks and many of these has also been uh, actually taken away and chiseled away and just removed what a stunning place but we're going to take it down to the most stunning feature that this camp has to offer and that's just behind that tree there i'm not a hundred percent sure but if you ask me i think this is the absolutely totally hundred percent original windows because you can see this green color here. I've seen that many, many times on such barracks. So I think maybe they even found these windows somewhere and reinstalled them. And now they're kind of restoring them. But that is most definitely the green color of the German barrack because they were very often colored uh, brown, green and all of that so that people wouldn't be able to recognize them from the air as something special other than either nature or a typical barrack. Just a tiny little sneak peek inside here. See the stairs? Wow. I'm just kind of sneaking inside to show you this little lounge here. Crazy stuff. This is exactly what it did look like. It's untouched, it's kind of been taken care of. Just imagine Franz, Hans and Willem going up and down there. Holy cow. This is spectacular. German submarine crew members, barracks everywhere. I think this is exactly where the swimming pool was. I'm not 100% sure, but it really looks like it. But look at that. This is amazing. And there's a structure in the center there. We're going to check that out. Wow. This is spectacular, to be honest. Let's check out what that little structure is in the middle. I didn't see that on the maps of photos, so that's going to be exciting. That's a pretty cool little thing. It looks like a shelter or something. Or could it have been a garage? Maybe the officers had a garage available. I don't know. That's a brick wall I can see. Little brick wall there. Something going on there. And then it seems like just another entrance, I guess. Huh. 
wall, maybe there was some kind of room here in the back. Interesting. What you're about to see now is very, very rare. And uh, this place has got one, and it's that thing there. That is spectacular. What is it? It was actually used as a air raid shelter, but also as the camp's hospital. And that thing is spectacular in itself, but what is even more spectacular is that they actually had two flak guns up there. So it's a combination of a uh, air raid shelter, it's a uh, hospital, but also an anti-aircraft gun, and that kind of makes it a flak tomb or flak tower. And that is very, very rare to see these days. And it hasn't been touched. And I guess the walls there are several meter thick and the roof is probably just as thick. That is spectacular. Once upon a time, I guess there were some 88 millimeters on the top there to protect because that's what it was all about, to protect the camp, protect the crews. You needed to have something. And we know they had some 20 millimeter flat guns in the area as well. I think there were four of those. And they had these two massive guns on the top there. If you didn't know, you could suspect that to be a church kind of entrance. But then again, when you look up, it's not. Wow, it is massive. It is absolutely massive. And how many stories are that? That's one, two, three, four, five. That's like six stories high. Wow. former one of Hitler's U-boat camps for the U-boat crews. They were rewarded when they came back from the Soviets, and I'm so happy that we managed to find this place and share it with you. That's what it's all about. We do the research, we travel, we go out and find these locations. There's no copy paste bullshit. It's just us, me, my son, my daughter doing all of this hard work. So if you want to support us, we have this little super thanks thing here and uh, help us out to get some fuel into the fuel tank to go out and do more and we can present more and you can enjoy more also if you want to become a patron team member there are perks like these uh, giveaways here the shadow boxes and for your eyes only video travel vlogs all kinds of restoration projects special in-depth things like these paperwork walkabouts where i take you into another world of the world with two scene and basically just trying to show you as much as we can and with your support we'll be able to do that thank you for being a patron team member and the donations coming into paypal absolutely thank you thank you for that you are the guys and girls who enables us to do that so thank you also if you want to help us out did you know that more than 70 percent of you skip the videos and you watch if i present a video of like 17 minutes 
in general, you will watch between three and a half and five and a half minutes. Why, guys? Watch the videos in full, don't skip, and you will help the algorithms to let us grow and reach more people, and we can go out and show you even more incredible places. I'm working with some absolutely stunning things coming up, even another U-boat camp we're gonna visit, and there are some spectacular scenes coming up where we're gonna show you some real World War II guns still at the locations, some fantastic aircraft crash sites, it's just, tons of it and it's thanks to you that we can do it so give us a thumbs up subscribe hit the comment field give us a heart and hit the notification bell to be notified every time we release a new video thank you for being here stay safe keep smiling and i will definitely meet you out there in the next one